Well, yes, I am just so uh, honored and excited about uh, being in this new role as CBS Health's first Chief Health Equity Officer. You know, at, at my core, I'm really someone who uh, likes to work on really challenging uh, problems that plague our healthcare system, both on the, on the payer and the provider side. We know that there are so many reasons why health disparities exist. We know there are those social determinants of health that are the reason why a lot of people don't have the opportunity to achieve optimal health. So I'm just really excited to work across all of the lines of business of CBS Health. I think because of this scope that we have across the entire country, we can actually make a really uh, big, important impact on healthcare in this country. So that's why I'm excited about uh, this role. I do think that while the reasons why health disparities exist are complex, uh, they are related to systems and structures that have been in place in this country uh, since its inception, I, I do think that a lot of the disparities we see are actually preventable. Uh, they are often man-made. They're not related to genetics necessarily, uh, or at all, quite frankly, uh, oftentimes. And uh, I, I think that there are things that we can do uh, as a healthcare company, uh, as a health insurer, when we think about, for example, uh, benefits design and how we are providing outreach to our members, how we are addressing uh, social determinants of health, how we are looking at our data and, and engaging our members based on disparities that we see. Uh, the experience of our customers and our, and our, and our retail shops and, and, and how we can make sure we are bringing care to where people are, uh, knowing uh, that our retail stores are, are in, in every uh, a state and, and, and across the entire country. So I, I think there's a great opportunity to drive health equity given our footprint as a payer, as a provider um, uh, across the, the, the country. So what does health equity look like to me? I think it really uh, starts with the definition of health equity. And quite simply, I think of it as uh, the opportunity for everyone to achieve optimal health. And that's everyone, regardless of your race or ethnicity, uh, your primary language spoken, your sexual orientation, gender identity, uh, your, your religion, uh, whether or not you have a disability, uh, whether you live in a rural or an urban, urban area, regardless of who you are, what you look like, uh, who you worship and, and where you live, you should have the same opportunity to achieve optimal health. So that's really what health equity is all about. And there are things that we can do across the enterprise to be able to make that happen. What is our, our strategy to advance health equity as an enterprise? So I'm currently, I'm about uh, four months into my role, and so working with all of the business leaders to understand uh, the business and all of our uh, great assets and how to bring them together to really align on a strategy. But I will say that it's both internal and, and external facing. Um, for one, just aligning on uh, how we think about health equity as an enterprise, making sure uh, from our frontline staff all the way to our executive leadership, we all have a common understanding and framework of health equity and how we as CVS Health can really move forward with, with advancing health equity uh, for our members, for our clients, for, for our customers. It's also about measurement. Uh, you measure what you treasure, and you, you certainly uh, cannot advance or improve disparities if you're not collecting sufficient data. So we are working to make sure we are robustly collecting um, demographic data so that we can understand disparities and then work within our programs and, and with partners to be able to drive down those disparities. And then importantly, action. That is our, our third pillar of our, our, our developing strategy. How can we look at our, our programs with an equity lens, uh, making sure our programs are easily accessible, making sure we're thinking about the diversity uh, of our, our members and our clients across the country, and also our programs. How can we work with our, our, our Aetna team, our Caremark team, our virtual care, all of our assets across uh, the enterprise and really lean in to identifying disparities 
uh, leveraging our programs and then measuring um, both short and long term our, our goals as we work to uh, eliminate or at least decrease those disparities that we identify. CBS Health is uniquely positioned to tackle the challenging issues of health equity across the country. Uh, we touch more than 100 million people across our, our lines of, of, of business. Uh, we know that even with our, our pharmacies, uh, we know that pharmacists are the most trusted source of information uh, for a lot of people. And we also know that people are more likely to see their pharmacist in any given month than they are to actually see their, their doctor or nurse. So we are meeting members where they are. We have an opportunity to really uh, guide and advance health equity because we are in communities. We have those established relationships uh, with people in communities already. There's just so much that we can do uh, as we work to integrate our, our services across all lines of business. And that's really exciting. I will say that while social determinants of health are part of health equity, uh, it, it, it's not uh, the same. You can address social determinants of health and still because of uh, racism and ableism and, and classism and, and other things that exist in society, you still will see disparities. A great example of this is in maternal mortality rates. We know, for example, that a black woman with a college education is 1.6 times as likely uh, to have a complication and die from a pregnancy-related complication than a white woman who does not have a high school diploma. And so that statistic alone tells you that it's not about just social determinants of health and poverty, but there are other things that we have to address in order to advance health equity. So what is culturally competent care? Uh, it quite simply means meeting people where they are when it comes to uh, providing health care. And that's something that I know we are committed to uh, at CVS Health and all of the great care that we provide in our minute clinics and our health hubs. And it means making sure we understand uh, where people are coming from. It means that we are providing services in a language that, that people um, are comfortable with. Uh, it makes sure that we understand everyone's cultural preferences and how they would like to receive care and that we are making sure we are, with our own uh, assets, leveraging and, and promoting health literacy uh, with the services that we provide. So that is what it means to provide culturally competent care. Yeah, so public-private partnerships are, are really just so important. Uh, I've, I've spent a lot of time uh, on the, the public side as far as advancing health initiatives, but in all of those roles, it's been so important, uh, and I've made it a point to partner with private uh, entities, including uh, with CBS Health. I think an example is the COVID-19 uh, pandemic response. We know that CBS Health has been a leader in advancing what uh, people would say is a public health crisis, but there's no question that CBS Health as a private uh, corporation has absolutely played a huge role in driving down this pandemic with our robust testing uh, and vaccination services that are not just at our pharmacies, but we partner with communities, with state health departments, with businesses, uh, with community-based organizations to bring these important services. So I think that's just really showing how important public-private partnerships are in advancing really important uh, health strategies. Yeah, I think my background in, in leading uh, public health de departments uh, really does help me uh, in this role at CVS Health. I've been challenged with leading very complex and challenging strategies, uh, including building back uh, from scratch Detroit Health Department after it was essentially closed, uh, responding to the largest hepatitis A outbreak in, in modern history, and then, of course, and my most recent role, which was leading uh, the development and execution of Michigan's COVID-19 response. You know, I, I think importantly, I've been able to really build public-private partnerships in uh, those roles. And I would say I've been able to successfully lead programs that have achieved actual measurable outcomes, which is really, really important. 
whether that's increasing uh, lead testing, uh, providing direct services for, for children in the city of Detroit, uh, leading a, a strategy and working with public and private partners to uh, help Detroit get to the lowest infant mortality rate in recorded uh, history, uh, and also uh, leading Michigan's COVID-19 response. Michigan was one of, one of the first states to actually uh, collect and report racial and ethnic disparities, and we put together a strategy working with private partners as well to bring that disparity down. We were able to successfully uh, close um, or decrease that disparity. So I, I would say that uh, I've, I've certainly worked in fast-paced, complex, often under-resourced environments uh, building teams and partnerships to advance health outcomes. And, and I'm excited to bring that background and skill set to my role here at CBS Health.